Greetings everyone. Welcome to the part 4 of the EEG MLDL playlist which you can see here. In this part we are going to see how we can implement Chrononet a deep recurrent neural network for abnormal EEG identification. We have implemented this Chrononet using PyTorch in part 3 and its subparts but now we are going to implement the same thing using Keras. There are two steps involved in our tutorial. The first one is data preparation and the second one is Keras implementation. For the data preparation, we have discussed this in much detail in the 3.4 EEG Chrononet data preparation part 1 and 3.5 which is the part 2 of the data preparation. So we are not going to discuss this how to prepare the data for the Keras but you can watch them in the previous sections. So you can also watch the implementation in the PyTorch in the section 3 point and its subparts and implementation is also available at GitHub in the following URL that is Talha Anwar CH YouTube dash tutorials. So now let's start with the revision of the data preparation part. First we install MNE, then we download the data and after that I will unzip the data. There are few libraries which I am going to use such as SciPy. This is used to load the data because currently the data is in dot .mat format. I am going to remove torch because I am not going to use it. These are the path of data set for control and IDD patients. For control this is the path that is TDC data path, this is the path of control and IDD data path is the path of patient. After that we have to convert .mat file to MNE object. For that I need few things such as channel name, channel type and sampling frequency. I pass this channel name, channel type and sampling frequency to MNE create info. After that I will set montage and convert the data from numpy array to raw array of MNE. Once the data is in MNE format I can set EEG reference and after that I will filter the data and create the epochs of the duration 4 seconds with no overlap. Once the function is created now I can convert this data of IDD and TDC to the MNE object instead of .mat format. I have discussed all of these things in the previous tutorials. After that I will create the labels and the group list. I have also discussed why I am using standard scalar 3D because the by default standard scalar wouldn't scale the 3D data. It is built for 2D data. But the data we have is 3D data because we have epochs, channel and sequence length. So we have to override the base class and use it for 3D scaling. I converted the list into numpy array and now we have 420,512,14. 420 is the number of epochs or trials, 512 is the sequence length and 14 is the number of channels. Once we got the data in NumPy format, we can split the data into train and validation dataset and for that we are going to use group K fold and I have also discussed in previous part that we have why we have to use group K fold and why we can't randomly split the data using train test split. So now let's start the Keras implementation. If you see the chrononet which is actually the in show in figure 2 part b the first layer is the input layer and then we have a block of that is called inception block the first layer of inception the first convolution of inception block contained two kernel size then four kernel size and then eight kernel size after that they are concatenated so we are going to use so we are going to build the inception block first and we have also built that inception block using pytorch but now we are going to build it using keras The filters, filter number of filters are set to 32, kernel size to 2, stride is 2 and activation is really low. We use padding to equal to causal. Because if we see the, for this layer, this has 2 kernel size and 32 number of filter and the stride is 2. 
after that we will build the second convolution layer and also the third convolution layer in second layer we will use kernel size equal to 4 and kernel and in third convolution layer we will use kernel size equal to 8 after that we will concatenate all of this con convolution layer let me create a input of shape 15000 comma 22 and pass this input to the block 1 let's check the shape of block 1 the shape of block 1 is 17 7500 comma 96 if we check the shape, it is 7500,96 after the first block. Then we have to implement the second block, third block. The output of block 1 will go to the as the input of block 2 and the output of block 2 will go as the input of block 3. If we check the shape of block 3, We can see that it is 1875,96 and in diagram if we check the shape it is 1875,96. After that we have to implement the GRU layers. We have 4 GRU layers. The first GRU layer have units 32. We can see that the first layer have units 32 and we have to pass the output of block 3 as the input of first GRU layer. The second GRU layer also have 32 units and the output of GRU1 will be the input of GRU2. After that we will concatenate the output of GRU1 and GRU2. Once the output of GRU1 and GRU2 is concatenated, which we can see here, we have to implement the GRU3, which also have 32 number of units. The GRU3 accept the output of GRU concatenation. After the GRU3, GRU3 layer, the output of GRU1, GRU2, and GRU3 is concatenated, and the output is 1875,96. We can say that output is 1875,96. Now it's the time to implement the final GRU layer. After the 4 GRU layer, we have to implement the softmax activation function. But here we are dealing with binary problem that whether the patient is suffering from IDD or not, we can use sigmoid activation activation function also now we have to create a model because we are not using the sequential model instead we are using a functional model so we have to create a model class and pass it to the inputs and the outputs After that we can compile the model and pass the optimizer, loss function and the evaluation metric. Now it's the time to filter the model using model.fit. We have to pass the train feature, train label, validation features and validation label. Number of epochs are set to 10. That size is set to 128. And then we pass the validation data.
okay we got an error because the shape of our data is 5 12 comma 14 but the shape in the paper is 15,000 comma 22 so we have to reshape the data according to our data set and I have to pass 5 12 comma 14 as the input shape Now we can evaluate the model using model.evaluate and here I have to pass the training validation features and validation labels. We got an accuracy of 100 and if we see that we also got the accuracy of 100 we start from 0.97 and reaches to 100. So this is the implementation of Chrononet in the Keras framework. Though Keras is more simpler than PyTorch, but sometimes for complex thing, we have to use PyTorch. So I have shown you how to implement a single paper both in PyTorch and Keras. Thank you.